done in, in our office on um, commerce trade. We, we were about um, we were actually about 27, 28 people, and it's been a fantastic day with lots of great discussions, um, looking at the new features of Mahara, which we'll take a look at um, at the end of the whole during a very brief presentation. But also talking about um, smart evidence, um, have looking into what can we do with it, would it fit into organisations. Briefly touching also on collaboration, assessment in general, and then also on uh, TI, um, learning tools and interoperability, stealing thunder from Bob here again, because it's coming Thanks, up on the slide. Um, because that's one of the very new features that we are putting into Mahara, and so we thought, let one of our developers talk about it. Um, Robert Lyon, he is uh, a Mahara core developer and has been so for a number of years by now. So all the things that you actually see in the software and that you experience, at least one person needs to write all that code. And so Bob is representing all the developers that are contributing to Mahara. So if you have any technical questions, please address them to him. Um, and if you have any technical questions for, or any, any questions for the LTI integration from the LMS side, we also have uh, Julian from Instructor here, um, who have been um, instrumental in making the LTI integration happen. And so we also had great conversation yesterday about what do we want to go beyond what um, Robert is presenting and so he'll tell you all about it now in his presentation. Make the connection with your LMS. Thank you, Christina. Hi, my name's uh, Robert Lyon. I got into IT so I didn't actually have to talk to people so this is <laughs> kind of um, a bit different from my normal work day. Um, so yes, uh, yeah. In the beginning, there was Mahara, and and it was good, and it and it worked, and but there were some issues with some things, and I take no responsibility for that because I wasn't around at that time. Yeah, but the great thing is, it's it's still around today. It's still being used. It's still software that the learning environment wants, and they want to improve. So that's excellent. But people want more than what. We offer, they always are asking us to add new things. And when I first started in Mahara, they're offering asking, you know, I saw such and such in some other system, add it to Mahara. Um, but fortunately, we can't add everything into Mahara. So, one of the things people said, well, can we then integrate it with our LMS so that we can uh, go from where we are to where you are in a nice, easy way? And so this was first achieved um, via the Mnet where we, we got to connect to Moodle and we called it Mahoodle. But as you can see over there on the right hand side in that picture, it's, it's kind of a complicated spaghetti kind of setup and it was hard for people to do, it was very technical. And it was very limited, in fact you had to have Mahara and Moodle and you had to connect them together and that was kind of it. Um, the nice thing was um, there were good stuff developed with Mahoodle so that um, you had some assignment submission, things like that. But when I first came to um, join Mahara, I had to look into a bug within the Mahoodle setup. So I thought, all oh, right, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll set this up. You know, I'm a technical person. I'll just follow a quick um, online thing. It took me ages to get the thing to, s to talk to each other. So it was not a very easy, nice thing to do. And from a technical standpoint. So then more things were added to Mahara that helped us talk to other LMSs with single sign-ons and federated sign-ons with LDAP. Um, we had things like um, Mozilla's Persona, there was a way to log in from that, but unfortunately Persona's now gone away. Um, but it was kind of limited in the fact that if you're setting something up, you had to have some sort of third-party thing. So you went from your LMS to the third party and then authenticated there and then went over to Mahara and it checked to make sure that you're still the same allowed person. And so one of the problems with that is if the third party for some reason is not accessible at that point in time, suddenly you can't log in and do stuff, which is kind of annoying. So recently, I think in 1610 I think it was, we added web services which gave us a greater suite of things, of ways of connecting um, Maharas to other LMSs and other things. And 
the things we went for was the nice fresh OAuth soap type, sort of the open standard so that if your system can talk in this language then we can understand it as well. Um, looking at things like token based authentication and things like that. Which means we could connect to lots more different things. And now adding LTI integration. So LTI integration is, as it's been mentioned, it's learning tools interoperability. It is a standard which has been used in a wide variety of places, um, things like Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, DTL, B2L. They they all use this, so they can all talk to each other in the same language. Um, it was created by Global Learning Consortium, so it's like a, it's backed, it's a, used by lots of people, it's got a proper standard so everyone can look at it and go, yes, this is what we need to do. Um, and it establishes, what it does is it establishes a trust between a single application, say an LMS course, and an external tool, say Mahara. So it kind of cuts out the need for that sort of third party SAML, LDAP sort of thing. So you're kind of just talking strict directly again like we were way back in the spaghetti day when we first started. Um, which, which means it kind of removes points of failure, which is good. It, um, it's an organic approach to integration. So instead of having to set up a whole bunch of infrastructure like having a um, federated sign-on system or an identity provider or whatever. It's getting this thing talking to that thing directly and if the authentication passes, they can just do their things between the two of them. So it saves a lot of time and effort of having to set up a whole bunch of infrastructure. So yes, so as I mentioned, it's a lot easier to set up um, in fact, it could be quite painless, painless, which I will kind of hopefully demonstrate in a little while. Um, so you avoid needing to install extra things on your systems. Um, uses robust value standards and stuff like that. So now I'll get down to the example. Um, so what, we going to show, what I'm going to show you is how easy it is to connect something like Mahara to Canvas and the sort of the, the basic setups you'd need to do as an administrator or course owner, I guess. Um, the nice thing is there's hardly any steps, so that's real good, so it means my talk will finish really quickly and you guys can get to lunch a lot earlier. Um, right, so first up, looking at what we need to do on the Mahara end because as per usual, the Mahara end is the one with the most setup steps. So, because web services already exist in Mahara 16.10, to do the LTI module is, it's a kind of a thing that web services use, uses, so there's not much setup itself for LTI. So, when you go to your um, extensions um, page and administration, you'll if you haven't already installed it, you'll see this left-hand side there on the left-hand of the red line, and there will just be a link say install. You click it. One thing, pretty easy. Once that happens, you get the page reloaded again, and you see the stuff on the right-hand side. Now, in the past, when we got authentication talking to each other, we'd have you know you have to go through all these bunches of steps. You have to do it this and that. Go to that page. Do this. Go to this page click this button, push that knob, whatever. Um, now we just have a little um, configuration cog. You click the old configuration cog and you get a page like this. Now if you've already set up some web services stuff, a lot of those triangles will probably already be ticks anyway. And there, there is possibly a chance that they'll all be ticks and you won't have to do anything here. Otherwise you just got the old auto configure down the bottom. You click that to yes, and there's a save button which you can't see below my <laughs> my uh, screen there. And you push save, and it will set up all the bits and pieces needed for LTI to run on Mahara. Then, so that's that's another one click. So so far we've done two clicks. 
So then we want to create an instance so that, in this case, our canvas can talk to Baha and back and forth. So we have, on the bottom half of the screen, you'll see like a form. So you give it a name, so your application's name, so you your connection here, you can call it whatever you like. You pick an institution from the middle drop-down box, so you'll obviously have institutions set up in your system. And then you choose the LTI integration from the third box, and you click Add, and then it'll give you something like you see in the top half of the screen there, where it has your application name, who owns it, just obviously administrator at this time. And you have two things, a consumer key and a consumer secret. And they are the two bits of information that we need to give to Canvas, which I'll show you in a little bit. So that's, so so far we've done two clicks and we've filled in three things. And two of those are from drop down boxes, so it's hard to get it wrong. And then we need to, which on this screen, which I also cut off, if, if you scroll to the right, which you can't because it's a picture, there is a little cog on this one for managing it, which gives you this screen with one choice of do you want to auto create users coming from Canvas or not. So that's kind of a yes, no, one choice option, so that's not too hard to get confused about. Well, quick question, does that automatically create the users as they try to come into Canvas? Yes, yeah, so if, if the user has not got an account in Mahara already, then yes, as they come in from Canvas, a certain vari variables will be passed in, like their, their first name, last name, email address, things like that. So then when they hit Mahara, it will create a new user within Mahara with those details that come across. <coughs> So, sorry, why, why would you not put yes? Um, some systems might already have the users added into Mahara and they only want those people coming across. And so if you are a person who's trying to come across from this link from Canvas, but you're not supposed to, then it will go no. I haven't found you in Mahara, I will not make you. But so if you already exist in Mahara, it's not going to double up or anything like that. It should not double up, no. It is based upon the email address which should be unique in both systems. So that's, so that's two clicks, three filled out fields and another choice, that's not any options at all. Um, and the last thing you need to do as an administrator is the institution that you chose, which for us up here was Catalyst, we need to make sure that the web services is chosen as an authentication plugin for that institution. Uh, currently this is how we have to do it. I'm um, in the process of getting rid of this option um, so that when you fill out this form, it checks that and adds it automatically. But currently you still have to do that bit. But hopefully you won't have to do that bit soon. So that's, so that's it. So that's Mahara side set up. It's, it's only, uh, I think, five things to do, which is not too many considering how life used to be. And then we jump over to the Canvas site. So in Canvas, you would go in. Say you're in. A, I think this is in a course. You go into a course. You choose your settings. And if you want to install it from the Edu App Center, you would go and search for the app called Mahara. So you hunt it down. So that's just one little search. There it is. You click on it, and it will give you a form. And so they, it, I think it auto populates with the name Mahara, but I think you can change that to whatever you want it to be called. And then you just pick the consumer key and the consumer secret, which we found back here. So you just take those two things, copy and paste them off the uh, screen there, pop them in there. And the launch URL is just the URL of your Mahara site. So as long as you can see your Mahara site with a web, browser and you can see this with a web browser, you can stick it in, they should find each other. Or if you don't want to use the app option, which I, if you don't want to for some reason, if you want to add extra configuration variables or something, you can add your app manually as, as there with the add button and then you just choose, so it's a similar form as the other one, you choose by URL so you want to find Mahara via the URL and then you put in the same sort of information except for the configuration URL would be the name of your site plus Moodle LTI config XML PHP and that way Canvas gets a little chunk of information from Mahara 
so it knows how to set up and talk to it properly. So, and because I had five slides for the Mahara side, I thought I had five slides for this side. And so once you've done that, you get a link over here on your left hand side for Mahara, uh, called Mahara or whatever name you gave it in that form. And when you click that, it will log you in to Mahara. And so that's, at the moment, kind of all we've got with the LTI integration um, is kind of a single sign-on between Canvas and Mahara. But the great thing about the LTI integration is, unlike a lot of the other earlier single sign-on things that I mentioned, this one can do more stuff. You can pass more information between the two. So we could extend this plugin to fetch user information from Mahara or give other information to Mahara relating to whatever we wanted to do. And so that kind of brings us to the future. What do we want to do? What things do we want to flick across? Well, first up, we want to kind of test what we've currently got with more LMS. And I was trying yesterday with Shen to test with um, Blackboard and there's some things we need to iron out there, but hopefully those sorts of things will be ironed out before 1704 is released. Um, what else? So like, currently way back at the start, with the spaghetti, with the mahoodle, we talked about, I said mention assignment submissions, one of the things it can do. That's kind of the thing we need the LTI to do because that way we can do assignment submissions not just to Moodle, but we could do it to Canvas, to Blackboard, to other places like that. So it's kind of like taking this thing we've already done but doing it better and more advanced for the future. Um, and that will also allow us to kind of retire the MNET way of doing things, which was kind of done in a sort of a, it was done, it worked in its time, but the problem is whenever Mahara changes or Moodle changes, then sometimes things break and it can't make the talk and the connection again. And if you're not on the right versions, it's going to be problems. Whereas using LTI, it's kind of like they all talk the same language at the gateway. And so it doesn't matter if Mahara goes this way and Moodle goes that way or whatever, or whatever system, as long as they're still talking with the same LTI language, then they should still continue to work into the future. And you're not dependent on versioning of which system you're using. Um, you're looking at more transferring of content. So with web services in Mahara, there has a whole bunch of, sort of API hooks that can do a whole bunch of stuff other than just authentication. And so LTI would be able to hook into these hooks and do more exciting things. It's just a matter of finding time and energy to write some of these modules and plugins. But the nice thing about having now made the LTI plugin, it means that not just Mahara, not just people like Canvas or Blackboard, but anyone out there can take a copy of this plugin and go, oh, I can adjust it this way and that way, and I've got the authentication part already working, and I can add these other things on, and it's be a lot easier for third-party developers to make things that will talk to Mahara. Um, yeah, so talking about other, uh, sure, right there. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like the same thing. Yeah, so people can make other things that will connect in. Um, at the moment, it's kind of this plugin works with you're in the Canvas side and you can connect to Mahara. But in the future, we'll have things, the ability to have things in Mahara that reach out and grab stuff from other places and, and talk that way. And that's, that's it. I can't imagine it lasted more than five minutes. So that's excellent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I'm sure there are. Yes. So with the LTI, it's, it's operating now with Canvas? Yes. So yeah. currently it works as we expect with Canvas. And it almost works with Blackboard. I just need to make a few tweaks on the Mahara side. And Moodle. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Yes, and it works with Moodle as well, yes. Um, and with the assignment submission, are you thinking that's going to come in 1704? Uh, yeah, so currently we're kind of at a sort of, I guess, 
it's kind of like a phase one of LTI, but it's yeah. kind of like a phase two of web services. Um, that yes, we want to add and configure sort of more API sort of stuff so that we can do things like assignment yeah. submission through the LTI by hooking into the right APIs. It's just that some of those things on the Mahara side haven't been done yet. So some of some of the assignment and submission stuff is still very kind of inbuilt core code that needs to kind of be extracted out and made more API like. Okay. So 17 core is piecing the sign off and assignment submission would come to something later. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, we're kind of working towards that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, this is probably a question that you can't answer. I'm just oh, thinking, excellent. Coming from a, an institution which is a blackboard institution and a very risk averse conservative blackboard institution, yeah. if I go to our LMS manager and say, I want you to install this uh, LTI probability and you connect with my partner, and we'd like to say no on the grounds of all these two all sorts of testing. So I'm just giving me the sense of how much. Currently at this point, it's it's mo it's just a it's the single sign on into Mahara. So if if your Blackboard signs you on into Mahara, it doesn't allow Mahara to take over and do bad things to Blackboard. I mean, they still are kind of separated. But it just means that as a student, you don't have to log in into places. You don't have to remember two passwords, and and then you can take a whole bunch of data from Blackboard and put it in as a user. So they don't have to type all that stuff in a second time. Currently. Sorry. The great thing about the LTI being an international standard is that it's not just a standard that you should make it admin happy because it's a secure standard. It's a ratified standard. They'll be using it with other tools that are in internal it. So, assuming that your Mahara is already accepted as a tool by the admin, which is another question, <laughs> the <laughs> argument of, you know, will this work? Well, actually, it's going to increase their security to decrease their maintenance. So, yeah, this will actually give you more pluses and negatives. And, Thank you. Still, and uh, in addition to that, there's no installation needed. Um, so, if you already have your LMS and Mahara, it doesn't work, there's no plugin to install on the Mahara site. And actually, your admins will be very happy because they don't need a special checkbox building block for it, and um, they'll be really happy to use it as that. Okay, well, I might be giving you a call. <laughs> 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 I am the Blackboard owner at AUT, and I have to work, you know, no qualms at all about installing an LTI integration because we have a number of those with yeah. external tool sets, and LTI is a very known, um, it's, a, it's a very lightweight integration, really. All it does is just create a bit of an interface between systems. I mean, I don't know where you're from, what institution, who your manager is, but I, I wouldn't imagine that it would cause any What sort of integration would you like to see? Would you like to see it in addition to the ones that uh, Robert mentioned? Yeah, because part of the problem as an IT person is I can make things. But if no one's going to use them, it's like not really good use of my time. So if people could say what things would like me, that'd be great. Can you use me? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, pushing, um, giving the students the ability in the LMS side to push <coughs> something like an assignment or a forum posting into Mahara. Yeah, but that should technically be possible. I believe now with web services, I think the API is here for doing stuff like that. Otherwise, yeah, I have to check it. Yeah. Yeah. Who's currently using the Google um, assignment submission plugin? Quite a few. So <coughs> that functionality should probably be ported over so that you can continue um, addressing portfolios. Who's already using the transfer between the LMS and Mahara? When you say the transfer, so the transfer of content, what um, Stephen mentioned, kind of like taking forum posts automatically putting them into Mahara or when they had an assignment oh, yeah. uploaded to Moodle that they like it at the yeah. export to Moodle. Yeah. 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 Any other yeah. ideas that come to mind that should be done to a uh, I mean, this could be fine in sort of stuff, but I think the fire comes from more of a kind of background, the other background. You can create groups and things, right, within the courses, whether there's that point of evidence to be able to 
So, the, so when the user comes across, it brings its group information and replicates it. Yeah, they keep track groups. Yeah. Um, theoretically, that could be possible. I think the ABI is yeah. No, no, but what I'm saying is what I'm saying, a lot of those building blocks are already there. It's just making the plugin that puts them all together and does it, yeah. You're not creating the group in your LMS, and then you're also then creating the, you know, don't work and yeah, no, it, it sounds possible. Are you referring to the group in the assessment tool or are you referring to the group within Moodle itself? So, okay. I think in Moodle itself, yeah, you so to create the yeah. group and then you can assign yeah. different activities and assessment items to the group. Yeah. group. Yeah. And it just depends on yeah. how you've got it set up. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm just wondering about uh, that there's a, a huge um, uptake in secondary schools now of and uh, so basically you're, you're using the Chrome operating system and all your Google <coughs> apps and uh, is, is, how would you do that kind of integration? I mean, at present you can I believe put your Google apps in the yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe, I believe places like Google and stuff um, use LTI protocols as well so there would be the possibility to have their sort of systems talk with Mahara and back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so that would be one of the ideas that we discussed yesterday as a uh, decree for you because currently Mahara is a provider so that it's canvas and consumers we would also need to be a consumer at uh, uh, in order to allow other applications to Talk to Mahara. And for example, we have Google Docs to play with Mahara directly, so we will show us how that works on the canvas identity. And that is one of those things that could happen in the future. So, you have a, a, say, a Google Classroom with its own groups and forms, etc. So, you would envisage that because a lot of, a lot of kids are going to leave secondary school over the next few years with, with the, all the portfolio stuff essentially in Google. Mm -hmm. uh, and so through LTI yeah. you could then bring that into a yeah. Or you could um, look into a social authentication method as well. Mm -hmm. There's a really one from um, from quite a number of years ago that allows you to connect to Google or Twitter or Facebook and things like yeah. that. Any other ideas? If not, then please put your hands together again for a